All right, all right, all right. We can't do like a, a story time intro or anything like that because I'm already really, really delayed. I just actually opened all the fan mail and I'm 99% certain that that's going to be its own video coming out after you guys get this video. Because I had a lot of stuff and somebody sent me something absolutely insane at the end, so. And I'm not just saying that either, like I saved the package for last and I'm glad I did. But for today's main video on the channel, I was going to do ranking every single offensive player, but I'm going to save that for next week because I am short on time and those take a long time. So today I'm going to be giving you guys 10 NFL players who have just fallen off the face of the earth. And what I mean by falling off the face of the earth is that these guys were once very, very relevant in the NFL and now they might be in the league or they just don't have a job at all. So yeah, let's get into the video. Oh, let's pull that back really quick. Use code Wyatt's World on gfield.com to save yourself a discount on any G Field products. All right, now on to the video. Sorry to interrupt guys, I'm in the editing process right now. This is all gonna be just one big video. The start of the video, you're gonna get the 10 players who have fallen off the face of the earth, and then right after that, I go right into the fan mail. It's like another four or five minutes for those who wanna stick around for it, which I think most people do wanna stick around for. So there will not be two videos today, just one, and it's right here, right now. Okay, so starting off this list, this is in no particular order, by the way. And I know that there's a million of these players. These are just 10 that I personally thought of immediately. But starting off this list, we have Elshon Jeffrey. Does anybody remember when this guy was elite for like four days? He was really, really good in Chicago for two years, I think. It was 2013 and 2014, or 2014 and 2015. But he was really good in Chicago for two years, and then he went to Philadelphia and then just quietly died. I know he caught a touchdown from Jalen Hurts this year. That was the first time I had heard his name in, I think, four years. His first or second year in Philly, he had nine touchdowns, but he never broke a 1,000 yards after he left Chicago. And I actually pulled up a list of his injuries right here because that's why he fell off. He always got hurt. I'm not going to read off the dates and everything, but this is starting in 2016 and ending in 2020. Grade 1 hamstring strain. Knee strain grade 1. Rotator cuff tear. Rotator cuff tear. Calf strain, pedal ankle strain, pedal wifric fracture, leg calf strain. Never really did anything wrong, it's just your body hates you. Sorry, Elshon. All right, up next on this list, we've got Josh Gordon. Anybody remember Josh Gordon when he was on Cleveland that one year in 14 games, he almost had 1,700 receiving yards? Josh Gordon was one of those guys that was just absolutely fantastic, but he could not stop smoking pot. Whether it's a big deal or not, personally, I couldn't care any less if an athlete smokes. It, it does not matter. There's, but if it's a rule, it's a rule. And Josh Gordon literally refused to listen to it. I'm pretty sure ever since that year that he went off, that might have been his rookie year, every single year he had gotten into trouble at some point on or off season involving drugs. The Browns caught him. I think he went to the Patriots right after that. His locker was right next to Tom Brady. Patriots dropped him. Then he signed with the Seahawks like two years after that. They dropped him. Then he was playing in fan control football. And now he said he wants to come back and play in the NFL again. He's a little bit too old now, he's in his 30s, but I wish we would have gotten to see so much more out of Josh Gordon. It's unfortunate that the league had to treat him as a criminal because he smoked something that's legal in over half of America now, but uh, yeah, follow the rules kids, otherwise you're just not going to be able to ever do anything. Alright, up next we've got Earl Thomas. This is a fun one. I'm sure everybody remembers Earl Thomas. He played up until like two years ago. One of the better safeties of our generation possibly to ever enter the league after it's all said and done. He was in the Legion of Boom, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas. He's been around for a long time, but anyway, he was in Seattle and then there was some contract issues. He got hurt. For anybody that doesn't remember, he literally flicked off the Seahawks sideline as he was being carted off the field. Following season, he signed with the Ravens. As far as I'm concerned, he had a really good year. That was in 2019. And then there was an incident, I think the following offseason, with Earl Thomas, his brother, and a girl in the bed at the same time. I'm not going to go more in depth. It was super fucked up. I'm not sure what the entire ordeal was. It's been a long time since I've read about it. But anyway, after that, he got into a fight with one of his own teammates, leading to his release on the Ravens. After he was cut for his attitude issues and starting on-field problems with his teammates, the Texans worked him out. They never signed him as far as I'm concerned, and I haven't heard his name since. Probably still has a talent, but I think he's done. Up next, we've got Vontez Perfect. This guy is just the worst. He is an absolute piece of garbage. He tries to end people's careers for fun, like he's just a shitty person. 
He hasn't played in the league since he tried to murder Jack Doyle two or three seasons ago. Last time he played was for the Raiders, and I don't think anybody's looked at him. He might still be indefinitely suspended, for all I know. For you guys' insight, I have pulled up a list because, yes, there is a timeline called Vontez Burfik being a shitty player. September 22nd, 2013, Burfik got his first fine for hitting Green Bay Packers tight end Ryan Taylor in a not-so-nice place. Burfik also received a $21,000 fine in that same game for a hit on James Jones that drew a flag because the Packers receiver was deemed defenseless. Fast forward a couple months to October 27th of 2013, Burfik earned another $21,000 fine when he decided to spear the New York Jets wide receiver Stephen Hill with his helmet. Then we fast forward to 2015, he must have cleaned himself up a little bit, he made a tackle on Le'Veon Bell that forced him into a season-ending knee surgery. After that, Burfik celebrated the injury. And then if you go to December 13th, 2015, he got fined on three separate low hits during one game, and I even got into a fight with one of his own teammates on the sideline. Dude, I can't keep reading this shit, like it's never gonna end. Anyway, fast forwarding to September 19th, 2019, his last game he played, he smacked Jack Doyle in the helmet, receiving an indefinite suspension, and he hasn't played since. Decent player, just an awful, awful person. Coming up next is Ajay Ajayi. Ajay Ajayi played really, really good in Miami super early in his career. He got traded to Philadelphia, won a Super Bowl, then tore his ACL, and then I think they cut him, and I don't think he's played since. I looked him up to see what was going on with him. It says he's medically cleared and he's been fighting to battle for a spot on a practice squad on and off for three years. In other words, he's probably never going to find a home again because there's running backs coming in at a rate that never seems to stop. Jay Ajayi, man. He was great for when he played, though. I liked him. Rest in peace to probably the best Eagles running back since LaShawn McCoy. Speaking of running backs, up next we've got Devontae Freeman. This guy is a piece of shit, dude. He played for Atlanta for five, six years, something like that. Right when he entered the league, he had two seasons that were, they were good. They were thousand yard seasons. I don't think they were like 1400 yards or anything crazy like that. Ever since those two years, he was on and off the injured list, and when he played, he was just average. The Falcons ended up cutting him in 2019 or 20. They wanted to save some cap space. I don't blame him. He was worthless anyway. After Atlanta cut him, he visited the Jaguars. He visited the Falcons. I think he visited the Cardinals, and he couldn't reach an agreement with any of them. He didn't end up playing anywhere until Saquon Barkley got hurt and then he went to the Giants where he also got hurt. So I think that's where he's been, fighting for a backup job in New York, which sucks because he's not as good as Wayne Gallman either. Alright, up next we've got the man himself, Blake Bortles. He was the fucking worst. He, he is what Daniel Jones is looking like, they have the same career path. Remember the year Blake Bortles got carried to the AFC Championship by the Saxonville Jaguars and then they extended him to like a three-year, $50 million deal and then cut him the following season? He had one good year in Jacksonville, I think when he had Allen Robinson, which would make sense because Allen Robinson can make anybody look good. After that, he's been pretty much worthless. Finally got cut from Jacksonville, signed as Jared Goss back up on the Rams, got cut from the Rams, went to the Broncos on the practice squad when everyone had COVID, got cut from the Rams, and now he's signed on the Packers because they don't have a choice because Aaron Rodgers isn't going to play there. 2018, they cut him when he went 3-9, and nine, throwing for 2,718 yards, 13 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. Daniel Jones. Blake Bortles is a funny dude, and he's had some funny-ass interviews, but as a quarterback, he was awful. Up next, Isaiah Crowell. He was on Cleveland for four years. He did okay. He never broke 1,000 yards. It looked like he lingered right around 8-900. Went to the Jets in 2018 where he had 685 yards, six touchdowns. Wiped his ass with a ball and threw it into the crowd for a touchdown celebration, and I haven't heard from him since. I remember always being frustrated in fantasy with him because he was on the Jets, and they had him, they had Belial Powell, and I think there was even a third guy there who sometimes got some snaps too. Anyway, as far as Crowell's career went, I guess in 2019 he signed a one-year deal with the Raiders and then he tore his Achilles immediately, like I think in training camp, and he has not played football since. And he probably won't ever again because why would the league look for anybody like him when we have what we have now? Isaiah Crowell? Uh, yeah, fuck off, man. Up next, this is one- I'm gonna save him for last. We'll do Lamar Miller instead, because Lamar Miller is also fun to talk about. This was a guy that always seemed to have hype, but he just never ever did anything. He had two years in his career where he broke a thousand yards. Other than that, he was like seven, eight hundred yards, and he never got a lot of touchdowns either. Maybe he did in Miami. I know on Houston he didn't. 
It was funny because we had a prime 24-year-old Lamar Miller and then an old washed-up 33-year-old Frank Gore putting up the same numbers. Lamar Miller was ass, but anyway, in the start of one of the seasons, I don't think it was the COVID season. Uh, no, last year was the COVID season, obviously not, so it would have been 2019. He tore either his Achilles or his ACL right away preseason, missed the entire year, and then last year he signed with the Patriots for two or three days, and then I think he got cut. Where he went to the Bears practice squad, and then again got cut and now I think if I'm not mistaken I don't fucking know I can't keep track of him the last I heard he was on Washington where he will not get to play because he has the second coming of Jesus Christ himself Antonio Gibson manning the ball there and JD McKissick who is a very very good receiving back by the way super underrated and I saved the best for last let's talk about him Case Keenum he broke like every single record you could have in college football history at Houston because he redshirted and played five years. Ironically, drafted by Houston, I think, to relieve David Carr. That didn't work. Got traded to the Rams. That didn't work. Then, he signed to Minnesota as a third-string quarterback. Sam Bradford got hurt. Teddy Bridgewater wasn't ready to return yet. Case Keenum came in, went 13-3 and with the Minnesota Vikings, and led them to the NFC Championship. After that, the Vikings, I think they kind of knew what they had with Case Keenum as a one-year wonder. He would walk off to Denver, get absolutely annihilated there, where he would then go to Washington, not do anything good there, and now he's on the Cleveland Browns as Baker Mayfield's backup. Case Keenum, terrific, terrific guy. Definition of a system quarterback. I don't think he'll ever start again, but I hope Case Keenum has a really good rest of his life, because like I said, as a person, there's not a lot of people better. All right, so fan mail. Yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff here. I know it looks like a lot of envelopes, but majority of them actually have items inside. Like, it feels like cards and stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's open them up. I'm going to start off with the big jiffy here because it's just uh, really big and I want to get it out of the way. This is from James. Oh, okay. He sent me a baseball hacky sack. This is actually pretty cool. I haven't had a hacky sack in so long. A Byron Buxton opening day tops baseball card. I actually have this exact card. I think this is from the 2018 or 2017 set. Doesn't mean I can't appreciate it though. And I got a letter. Dear Wyatt, thank you for all the content you post on YouTube and TikTok. It makes my day when you post, so hopefully this makes your day a bit better. And he even drew a picture of my logo. Thank you, James. Next letter. This one is from Sri Harsha. It's like we got a letter here. Oh, this is a drawing. All right, so this says, hey, Wyatt, I wish you the best of luck going forward with YouTube. And I think there's, st oh, shit. Damn, man, this is sweet. He drew a bunch of shit. We got Buxton down in the corner. We got Diggs wearing half Vikings, half Bills down in the corner. We got a Vikings and a Bills logo, a Twins, a Timberwolves logo, a Wyatt's World logo. I know I butchered your name, but thank you a lot. This is really cool. He says he sucks at facial expressions. <laughs> and then I look at Byron Buxton. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Next package, this is from Koa. All right, so this letter says, Hi Wyatt, I've been watching your videos for over seven months now and you're already my favorite YouTuber. I love your content and I can't wait for more exciting videos in the future. Your biggest fan, Koa. And then I think that's supposed to be a prototype of a shirt. Thank you, Koa. All right, up next, uh, this one was considered a parcel. I had to pay like a dollar to get it, which isn't a big deal, but it has something in it. So they thought it was like a package. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> it's a little Lego Harry Potter. This camera is terrible, but this is great. And then it looks like a couple letters here. It says, thanks for being bad at Madden. Thanks for wasting your life on YouTube. Thanks for everything. <laughs> I don't know what that means, man. He drew a picture of my background, though. That's pretty cool. And then they sent another letter that says, do not open until 100,000. Okay. Thank you, Rylan. Up next, we got a letter from Ethan. Okay, so it looks like we might have a card here. I can't t Oh, shit! I don't have it, but is this the Panini one? It is. If you guys can't see it, it's a Panini Playoffs rookie Jalen Hurts card. I was just actually looking at the momentum set, so that's why I know what this card is. But thank you, man. That's super cool. And he also sent a letter. Wyatt, with this letter, I have included a rookie card of Jalen Hurts, your boy. I hope you like it. I would also like to apologize for making fun of you for throwing a pick in Madden. <laughs> no worries, man. I deserve it. From Ethan. Thank you, Ethan. Next package. This is from Nathan. On the back, it says, say hi to Buxton for me. I will, Nathan. There's a Tyler Lewin rookie card. I don't know who that is, but he played for the Nuggets. Anyway, it looks like a bunch of basketball cards and then a letter. Dear Wyatt, my name is Nathan, and I'm a huge fan of your videos. All right, so yeah, this is a letter from Nathan. Uh, it looks like it's a bunch of video suggestions and then some basketball cards. Uh, I don't have any basketball cards until now, so thank you, Nathan. 
Next package. All right, we got some more cards in here for sure. Hey, these are actually really cool, man. Dear Wyatt, my name is Jude. I am 12 years old and I love the Eagles. I hope you enjoy these cards from Jude. Please put me in a video. Okay, so he sent me a bunch of Vikings and Bills cards. He sent me an actual Andre Reed card from 1991. A rookie debut Dante Culpepper card? And an old ass 1989 Randall McDaniel card. I don't know if they have value, but these are really, really cool. Thank you, Jude. Next package. I think we got more cards, dude. I love this. It says, Dear Wyatt, my name is Jackson. I've been a fan since I saw your NFL shorts. Thank you for helping me through the ups and downs. He sent me three All-American cards and then a Jerry Rice Panini card. These All-American ones are really, really cool. They have a unique art to them. Thank you, Jackson. All right, next package. Wyatt, I can't tell you how much of a fan I am of you. You are legit the best content creator ever. Your videos make me so happy. You are really funny and awesome. All in all, I really love your videos and stuff. From Luke. And then he drew a picture of me on the Vikings. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. I will hold on to this. And last, we got a thick boy here. And this thing's heavy. I don't know what it is. What the fuck? What is this, dude? There's no way. Bro, the first thing I see is an Aaron Donald rookie card. This is too much, man. Oh my god, you might have sent me too much, dude. This is crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna read this letter before I go through the cards. This is- I can't believe this. Hey Wyatt, I've been watching since you were at 50k on TikTok. I watch your streams all the time too. Since I heard you had a P.O. box, I decided to send you a few random things, so here they are. And he left me no name and he crossed it out on the return. Oh my god, who are you? What the fuck? We've got an Andrew Wiggins autographed jersey card. Tredavious White rookie card. Josh Allen, I'm not sure, I don't think they're rookies, but we have his college field general cards in there too. Uh, some Vikings and Bills magnets. Dude, what the fuck? This camera is actually the worst, but we have an Aaron Donald rookie card. An Ezekiel Elliott jersey card. A Derrick Henry rookie card. A big ass Will Fuller patch card. I don't know what set these are from, but they're both in blisters. I got Hollow, Aaron Rodgers, and Russell Wilson. And then I got rookie cards for Jordan Love, Justin Herbert, Deshaun Watson, and Joe Burrow. They're not all from the same set, but they're rookies in different respective categories. I mean, this is insane, dude. To some card collectors, I guess this might not be a lot, but when I'm starting to see rookie cards and stuff like this popping up in jersey cards, this guy just sent me cards that have more value than anything in that case. Mystery man, you're a god, thank you. All right, guys, and that is going to be all for today's video. I really hope you like the 10 players who have fallen off the face of the earth, and I hope you guys also like the fan mail opening. I know I sure did. Mystery man, I, I don't know what to say still. The rest of you guys that I could thank, you guys know how much I mean it and how fun it is for me to open it. I don't care what it is, whether it's a drawing, a picture, a card, it doesn't matter. It's the fact that you guys want to send me things that just it makes it so cool. But anyway, guys, if you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I post daily. I'm gonna hop off and edit this so you guys can watch it on time. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.